Well, these look nice. 350 you said? Are you sure? They don't sound like that to me. So hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Now what we have here today are VRM One headphones. Now these are really interesting one. It's a first and only model coming from a small manufacturer based in Ukraine. And uh, because actually my country, Serbia and Ukraine, we have similar uh, Slavic background when it comes to language, I guess this is originally pronounced Verum or something like that. But we'll stick with Verum because it's much more Western viewers friendly. And these are really interesting because these are planar headphones. They're quite a bit big and chunky as you can see. These are not your lightweight headphones that you would want to carry around. Another reason you wouldn't want to do that is because they're open back. So basically everything you are listening to, everybody else around you will hear it too. And I hate those guys in public transport that makes us listen whatever they're listening to. You have a bad taste in music, man. Keep it for yourself. But let's start with build quality first. And on these headphones, we have pretty high quality materials, uh, starting with a metal band, as you can see. Also these knobs, this one that lets you tilt your headphones. I deliberately make it a little bit harder to tilt. Um, then we have these knobs that, would, that will let you adjust the headband. It's not as easy, you cannot do it actually on the go. You have to completely unscrew this metal knob that actually has a leather patch in the middle that feels really nice. Then you change the position of the headband and then you screw it back in its place. It's admittedly not the most practical solution, especially if there is several of people with different head sizes using same headphones. But for most of us that we are actually owning a pair for ourselves, I think this is pretty decent. I set it once, it stays firmly in place. It never accidentally goes up and down like with many other headphones. So this kind of solution has its pros and cons. I quite like it, to be honest. The headband itself is made of a genuine leather. It's very soft. It's very comfy once you put it on your head. Stitching is of a high quality. Everything looks just nice. These plates here are made of aluminium. And uh, the only thing that I think it's actually plastic is this part here. Now my version is called carbon and that's why this is like a black material with some carbon pattern on it. It looks really nice if you like black and silver color scheme, but there are two other colors that are more woody like and in my opinion they're even more beautiful. Next as you can see cable is detachable. It uses a very traditional 3.5 millimeters connectors. So cable is very easily exchangeable. You can also use balanced cables because left and right are completely separate. So if you have balanced amp, you want to use balanced cable, you're free to do that. Cable itself is of a really nice quality. It's uh, covered in some sort of cotton braiding. It's not tangly, it's not thin. It feels sturdy and substantial. You do get this kind of adapter in the box and that's it. Another thing except cable that's also detachable and I didn't know this until I actually found it online is ear pads. Well, ear pads are often detachable, but these ones, wow, look at that. They're magnetic. You just, snap them back into place. And how is that possible? Well, this driver 
ha actually has a natural magnet to it. But on the ear pad itself, you can probably see there is a very thin metal plate inside of it. And because of that, you can just snap it into place. It's actually very easy. Once you put them in place, they are firm and secure. Another thing that's worth mentioning is pads are quite thick, quite soft. It feels like some sort of memory foam. And as you can see, they're elongated. It's not just a circle, but there is like this elliptical shape. And for me, that's really, really important because I have this huge, almost elf-like ears. And with most headphones, like for example, these ones, these are hi-fi men's, I found them, uh, they're actually pressing my ear lobes a little bit. If I uh, make them longer, then they will press this part, which actually hurts after some time of use. If I make them shorter, they will press this part down here. But with this elongated approach, it fits perfectly. And even though they're quite chunky, quite weighty, because of this really cozy and soft headband, because great fluffy cushions, they're thick enough, nothing is actually touching my earlobes, nothing is pressing them, everything sits comfy around the ears themselves. I really like these. I use them for several hours and I never felt any sort of discomfort. And the last thing I wanted to mention is packaging. Now, I actually received them in this unassuming cardboard box and it's just so plain. Inside of it, you have a lot of bubble wrap. Everything is very securely placed. They're, they arrived in great condition, but don't expect some colors and fancy branding and like huge claims about you getting the best sound in the world. It's just a plain unassuming box. But once you actually try them and you hear them, you'll forget all about the box. Don't worry. Oh, but just before we continue talking about the sound, I quickly wanted to go to go through the specs. Now, as I mentioned, these are planar headphones. Their impedance is very low at just 8 ohms. That said, I didn't have any problem driving them with any of my DAX or amps, any background hiss. They're actually quite sensitive too, and I'll put all of that on the screen so you can see it. It's not really that important. What's important is the sound. Now, as I mentioned, these cost 350. Now, uh, at first, I actually just quickly connected them to my regular setup, which consists of LogGD30 DAC, that is a really nice, not too expensive DAC at 170, and Topping L30 amp that has quite a bit of power. And this is a really decent stack that I've been using lately, mainly to drive my uh, high Feynman's HE4XXX. I really like them from the moment I tested them. I actually kept using them. They have this neutral tonality, relaxed. I, I really like these. But the same moment I connected VRM1, I realized, oh my god, these have so much energy, cleaner, crisper edges, just more zest more details, more precision, all over the spectrum. Baseline is deeper, it's punchier too, it's more controlled, uh, it has more texture, and same goes for richer and more detailed mid-range, and also it goes for more extended highest spectrum. So I just quickly realized there is no comparison here. These really nice hi fi mens are just completely out of their league compared to VRM1. They're also cheaper, they're still great headphones, especially because they're quite often on some sort of sale. But that said, there's just no competition for VRM1, so we'll put them aside. And then it came to my mind, this stack 
that's together like 300 US dollars or something like that. Like price-wise, very logical pairing for VRM1. Might not actually do them justice, might not reveal what they can really do. So I removed this stack and I started using Topping D30 Pro DAC with Topping A30 Pro Amp. Now, this is simply more powerful, more beastly, more resolving sounding stack. And admittedly, um, it piles up to 750 US dollars. And you might think, well, that can be overkill for VRM1. But no, 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 it's not. They just started sounding even more energetic. Baseline had such control, such impact, that I was simply amazed. Um, tonality, overall tonality of these is very neutral. Baseline is not emphasized. It's not bloated. If you expect, expect something warm, something to plod along slowly with your rhythm, you know, like boom, boom, boom. These are not that. These are fast, precise, energetic. There's so much details and transients and texture. The quality of bass line is insane. But don't get me wrong here. That doesn't mean they do, do not have bass. Just the opposite. When it comes to bass being deep, being punchy, being energetic, it's probably the best bass line I've heard anywhere around this price. I started listening to some uh, bass rich music. I'll put something on the screen that you can try for yourself. And oh my God, there was so much sub bass. These were just plodding along with that sub bass. I was feeling genuine excitement. But there was no bloom, there was no haze, there was no spillage to the mid bass that's often happening with lesser headphones. So if you move to something else, something that's not electronic music with a lot of sub bass, and then you listen, for example, to some acoustic bass instruments based on strings, like bass guitar or double bass, you'll hear such a discipline. You'll be perfectly aware that these bass notes are coming from an instrument with a wire. There is vibration, there are transient, there is texture, everything is so tightly controlled, but energetic and dense. I loved it. Now, when it comes to mid-range, Again, it's crisp, it's completely uncolored uh, from the bass line, because as I said, these are really neutral sounding. Also, there is no depletion in the mid-range, something that's so common with so many brands these days. And there is no emphasis on upper mid-range register, something that gives a little bit of sparkliness and zing and things like that, but actually always introduce at least a little bit of sibilance, meaning that especially female vocals will have these annoyingly brightish and pesky s sh, things like that. Nothing of that sort happens here. I again loved it. Same thing with the highest frequencies, well extended, plenty of air, plenty of atmosphere and room around the instruments. But again, not overemphasized in any way. Not even once I felt these sounds squeaky, they have any sort of metallic sheen or anything like that. Now, as you can see so far, I was really, really happy with these. They have quick, speedy, energetic sound. Did I mention it's very energetic? All of the edges from bass line through mid range to high frequencies like cymbals, everything has a lot of energy, a lot of punch, speed, that's great. Sound staging, in my opinion, is good. It's one thing that's, that didn't blow me away. 
because they didn't use that trick, that lower mid-range dip that actually creates depletion in most vocals and instruments, making them, making them sound a little bit further away from you. These don't have that, because everything is quite neutral, quite flat. Both vocals and instruments are very pleasant, but kind of close to you. That said, layering and their separation is great. Clarity is great. They're just not the type of headphones that will give you that sense of bigger sound stage. Everything is happening a little bit closer to you and to your head, but then all of that that you hear is perfectly neutral tonally, in my opinion. It's energetic, it's quick, it's speedy, it's simply great. Now I'll quickly go through pairing and what do you need to drive them properly. As you might notice, I already mentioned my usual Logsg topping stack. It did really decent job with these. I didn't lack power, I didn't lack drive. But upgrading to D30 Pro, A30 Pro stack, it clearly unleashed more energy, better layering, better separation, quicker sound and more powerful bass line. It might sound a little bit weird because then this is like twice the price of the headphones themselves, but it pays. It pays these scale that well. As I mentioned, they're not insensitive headphones. You can drive them with basically anything. You can drive them with your smartphone, with uh, Dragonfly Black, with all these small USB-C back dongles, you will get sufficient loudness, but you will hear like 15 or 20% of what these can really do. Why? Because everything will sound much more congested, less energetic, layering will be compromised, this deep plodding sub bass will not be there, in, in that quality, in that extent, and everything will just collapse. So my recommendation is that using any sort of entry-level stack is the absolute minimum that you should use. For example, Shit Modi 3 plus Magni 3 or Topping E30 plus L30. They will not bring out everything and the best from VRM1, but they will bring enough for you to actually get the gist what these are all about. Go with anything below that level of quality, like for example, Fio K5 Pro or i5 Zen DAC. These are just not good enough, not resolving enough. They will not drive them satisfyingly and you will not know what you have in your hands you will be leaving like, like 50 or 60% of their performance just out of the table. Don't do that. If you buy headphones that are this good, treat them properly. If you have even better source such as this stack or a similar one, use that one too. You will be rewarded and they will start sounding much, much better. Now, all of that leads me to some comparisons. And as I mentioned, when I first compared them to these hi fi mans that are around uh, 180, 200 US dollars, but they often go on sale for even lower than that. It was such clear difference in sound quality. These are just much softer, hazier, even lazier, more difficult to drive. You need to crank that volume up significantly more, but you never get that speed and that explosive energy layering that you get from these. The same thing if we would to compare these with, for example, Bayer Dynamics DT 80, 880 or 990, something like that. There is just no comparison. You should think, if you think in terms of traditional brands, think in terms of six, seven, eight, even 900 US dollars headphones. 
I would put these roughly at the same level, for example, as Bayer Dynamics Amiron. Amiron. I don't know how to pronounce that. But they're more on that level of dynamics, of liveliness, of, of explosiveness. And then I actually realized that I don't have many expensive headphones that I can compare these with, because I'm more of a speaker kind of guy, but I do like headphones too. So I actually borrowed these to my friend. He's like a total HeadFi guy. Uh, among other things, he compared these to hi fi men Sundara, and he told me these are easily better. They have more deep sub-bass, bass is better controlled, mid-range feels richer, highest frequencies are more extended, but at the same time this feels more neutral, whereas Sundara feels not as resolving in bass, but a little bit more thinner and more um, sometimes even slightly hissy in the upper registers. So he clearly rated these above hi fi and Sundara's. I haven't heard that myself, I didn't have enough time to go there and, and test. And he told me something interesting, that he actually rated these at a similar level to ODZ LCD2 Classic, that he really likes. He said some slight differences in terms of sound staging and like really small tonal differences here and there, but these sound at that level. And finally, he told me that he would easily believe these cost around six or seven hundred US dollars. Now, with all of that said, when it comes to their sonic quality, I'm simply blasted away with it. My friend was too. So in the end, to make a conclusion here, if you're after highest possible sound fidelity for the lowest possible price, take these. Just treat them as if you bought a 700 US dollars headphones, because to get the maximum out of them, you will need better source and better amp than something that their price would suggest. You can pair them with a lower grade headgear, but they will not show you like more than 50 or 60% of what they can do. Treat them as if you bought some nice expensive Odyssey headphones, and they will treat you with equally good sound at almost half the price. How did this uh, small manufacturer from Ukraine did that? I don't know. Probably because he's not paying huge amounts of money to all of the magazines all over the world to advertise these. He's not paying for distributors and their employees and their salons where you can go and look at these. And instead of that, you just order directly from the manufacturer and you get the best possible sound that 350 can buy these days, in my opinion, and at least uh, that I have heard so far. Now, I cannot talk about their reliability or things like that, but they feel quality made. I viewed few of the earlier reviews, like two years ago on YouTube and on other websites, and I noticed that these are actually updated version. They look slightly different, including these plates. This metal construction looks slightly different. These knobs look slightly different. Different headband, this leather headband is prettier in my opinion. So I suppose that VRM1 actually evolved for the better. I, I believe that the constructor took the input from that early version, he improved some things to look more slick, prettier, more usable. Now I like them so much that I'll be keeping them for myself, 
they're actually going to be my reference headphones at this anywhere near this price point. And these are actually going to be that tough cookie that other headphones will have to beat if they want my full recommendation. So if you like this video, then click that button, share it with your friends, consider subscribing and maybe even becoming a patron if you would like to support this type of unbiased reviews that I'm doing here on the channel. By the way, big thanks to my patrons already. See you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.